Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm glad that there is so many people after uh, yesterday's party. Uh, so uh, we are glad that we can be here today and share with you our our story, our our success story. Uh, my name is Jakub Pavlik, and I work for TCP Cloud. And together with uh, Pavel Zaitz from AVG, we would like to share with you today our our user story, how we implemented OpenStack, but not just only OpenStack uh, in uh, AVG technologies. Uh, at first, a little bit about agenda. Uh, at first, we would like to introduce us, what, who is TCP Gal, who is uh, AVG. After Pavel, uh, we'll introduce the goals, uh, where we started with the project, and what was the what was the target, what are the AVG infrastructure layers. Next, I am going to talk about uh, our implementation phases from proof of concept through the pilot after production environment. And uh, after that, I would like to share with you the, our OpenStack architecture model and uh, continuous integration uh, model driven. And finally, Pavel, show you the, the the best thing, how we decrease the time for the deployment of the staging environment. So, Pavel, please introduce. Okay. Hello, good morning. My name is Pavel Zaitz. Uh, you, probably you know AVG as a security company. Uh, well known is our antivirus product, but we do uh, much more. In AVG, uh, I'm a team leader of one of the technology group. Uh, we are responsible for everything what is outside of uh, internal network. It means data centers, F5 load balancers, uh, CDN providers. And uh, the biggest part of our uh, work is uh, Linux server maintenance. Uh, we uh, are maintaining the web platforms, uh, e-commerce platform, and uh, the backend systems uh, for end-user customers like uh, license server. Because we are responsible for production, uh, we also support uh, development teams, uh, f uh, and uh, we are preparing for him the infrastructure to be able uh, Produce uh, the our products. Okay. Okay. So uh, who is TCP Cloud? So uh, we are quite new company, but we have focus f for the building private clouds uh, based on OpenStack, Open Control, and uh, open source technologies since uh, 2011. We are very active in global community. For example, we are of the main one of the main contributors to Open Control. We have our own data center and our key message that is that we are trying to be the maximum openness and use uh, all vendors technologies and don't be so vendor specific and uh, uh, things like that okay uh, where we started uh, the technology department in AVG has four groups uh, as I said, one of them is my group. Uh, we are responsible for Linuxes, uh, then uh, Windows, uh, uh, Windows group, uh, hardware group, and network group. Uh, to add uh, additional resources to our infrastructure or do uh, some change in the infrastructure uh, takes us uh, uh, days because each group is responsible for his part and uh, do a common, uh, biggest common uh, things uh, is uh, or was very hard. 100% uh, uh, of our uh, virtual infrastructure was running on VMware and uh, we were not so happy with, uh, with the API for uh, automation. Uh, because we had to do a lot of uh, manual tasks, uh, we had uh, almost no time for for the innovations. Uh, right now, let me briefly uh, go through uh, the uh, uh, through the uh, process of the uh, deployment of staging environment for the development uh, when. Uh, development requested uh, a new environment for, for testing. Uh, we get a request 
when we realize that we need uh, some additional resources like uh, storage or do a network uh, changes like create VLAN, create uh, firewall uh, rules, we had to uh, push the task to other teams, uh, wait uh, till uh, they deliver his part of work, then we were able to uh, clo manually clone the server uh, on, uh, in virtualization, apply the Puppet uh, profile, uh, do s few few things uh, manually, like get IP address from the IP plan, get the, the create a DNS uh, record for, for the servers. And when we had all these things done, we were able to hand over these uh, servers or this infrastructure to the development to be able to continue his task. All this process takes uh, several days because we had to wait each other, the group, uh, till each part of the, uh, the infrastructure teams deliver his work. Okay, what was uh, the goals? Uh, the, the request from the business was uh, quite simple speed up uh, the uh, time to market delivery. Uh, for, for the infrastructure, uh, for my team, it means speed up the infrastructure uh, delivery from days to hours. Uh, it means abstract from the physical, physical layer, uh, mainly in uh, storages and uh, network, uh, network part. Uh, the second thing is what is necessary to do, or what was necessary to do, do a full 100% uh, automation uh, of all processes, uh, what, what, we did, uh, what we did manually. Uh, therefore, uh, we choose an open stack like uh, automation platform, which is able to uh, give us all, all the necessary things, what uh, what was requested. Right now I would like to show you what are the uh, infrastructure layers, what, we, what, uh, what are the uh, things what is necessary to do to have full, uh, fully automated uh, infrastructure. Uh, as a, uh, as a uh, Virtual, uh, virtualization hypervisor we use KVM, uh, which best fits with uh, OpenStack. Uh, for network virtualization, uh, uh, was re recommended by guys from TCP Cloud, uh, OpenContrail as a uh, most powerful uh, uh, SDN uh, solution. Uh, on the, uh, on the uh, in, uh, or the orchestration uh, is done by OpenStack with uh, his APIs and uh, heat templates. And uh, on top of it, it's good to have a billing because it's good to know who is consuming our resources and how much. Uh, but this is the basic, and uh, we have, uh, we, uh, it was necessary to do uh, much more. Uh, the, uh, the infrastructure has to be monitored. Uh, one of the requests was, uh, was auto-scaling, and uh, uh, you, uh, when, when uh, we have uh, some server, we need to authorize, when we want to log in there, we need to authorize there. Then we choose uh, uh, IPA from, from Red Hat, uh, on the infrastructure, it's do, uh, good to know what happening is there. Therefore, it's, uh, we implemented logging using uh, Fluent, uh, Elasticsearch, and uh, Kibana. As a server configuration management, uh, we use Puppet uh, version 3 with uh, Hiera. And uh, for the uh, application configuration, we are using Konzul. Patch management is done by uh, uh, band, uh, done by uh, Spacewalk, and application content delivery uh, is uh, developed on uh, uh, Git uh, Artifactory, and as orchestration is used uh, Bamboo. When we have 
all these things we can uh, deploy virtual servers, including the, uh, the infrastructure uh, described in HEAT. And uh, these servers uh, has its own um, application like Java, Tomcat, database, PHP, whatever needs. OK. <clears throat> OK, so uh, implementation phases. So we divided the project into four parts. And the first part started in last quarter in 2014. And the first step was to set up last set, uh, lab setup. Uh, uh, as Pavel mentioned, on, it was described on the slide, is that we had to use the existing hardware and we don't want it to invest anymore to another storage system and uh, things like that. So we need, needed to prove that we can use the existing Hitachi uh, VSP storages. Uh, AVG also requires the using live migration uh, inside of the cloud and uh, test the load balancer as a service together with uh, F5 load balancers and automatic DNS registration. I will talk about, about details in the further slides. Uh, when we set up this environment and prove these things, we started with the pilot. And the goal of the pilot was to take one of the AVG application, uh, decompose it uh, into the parts, prepare it for the uh, configuration management and automatic uh, heat deployment, and uh, test it in the staging environment and measure things and uh, measure the effectiveness of these things. Now we are in quarter two in 2015. Now we have, two pro now, now we have a production environment into two data centers. Uh, and we develop the model-driven deployment automation uh, approach, which I will show you in the next slides. Uh, the future goal is to add the next uh, data center and scale up to uh, 300 compute nodes. Uh, okay, so first question when we had to start was uh, Neutron SDN solution. And as you know, all clouds are about networking and it is more crucial and uh, most crucial and key component inside of the cloud. And as you can see also in the summit, there are lots of sessions about uh, networking, how to do that. There exist many, many possible solutions, how you can do it. And it's very difficult to decide what is the best. And the key things what you need to get from the networking is a high availability, scalability, migration, multi-tenancy, and, f and f things like that. And also there are several buzzwords like load balancing as a service, firewall as a service, and service ch chaining. Uh, in AVG, uh, we had to decide between uh, four solutions. And the first idea was Vanilla Neutron, I mean OpenVSwitch and L3 Agent, the standard implementation, what was done in I, uh, OpenStack Icehouse and uh, in, in Juno. And as you know, there are a lot of problems with uh, high availability, how to scale it, how to provide uh, uh, advanced functions like uh, service chaining, and uh, also the bandwidth is not so uh, enough in the solution, so we left this solution. Uh, the second one was Cisco APIC. Uh, the Cisco APIC is more slideware than reality. And uh, as you can see also here, when you come to booth to Cisco and discuss them, please show me the Cisco APIC. Maybe they uh, answer you, there is one guy who knows something, but you've never seen him. So this was a very difficult problem. And when you want to uh, deploy Clive today, you need a solution which exists and not the solution which will be available after two years. Uh, the VMware NSX, uh, this was a different story because as Pavel mentioned, the, VM, uh, the AVG, everything, all infrastructure uh, was in, uh, on VMware and there are still uh, part of infrastructure which is on VMware. Uh, but there were uh, two points. Uh, the first point is a, a licensing model and second point is the VMware itself because you never know when they change the strategy and lock something and decide that the multi-hypervisor must die or something like this. And as I mentioned, we are open source company and we wanted to build an open solution uh, based on OpenStack. So uh, we decided for the uh, Juniper Contrail 
and I can give you the exactly five arguments why uh, the open contrail was what fits best our requirements. The first one is the licensing. Uh, it is completely fully open source solution uh, without, without any limitation uh, with possibility to buy the commercial support. What this mean? Uh, you can build the whole environment, scale the environment, and when you decide that you really need the support and you, you want to go to the production, you buy the commercial support uh, from the Juniper. The second thing is the high availability. Uh, the high availability is natively supported in Open Contrail, and it uses the standard protocols, uh, which there exist many many years in standard network boxes. Uh, the next, uh, the, the next key criterion is the cloud gateway routing, and this is very, very important because Open Contrail is one of there may be two solutions uh, which are able to support you the, to provide the gateway routing on the network boxes. And uh, routers was designed for the routing. The routing on the Linux machine doesn't make sense, and uh, you need to scale. You need to provide the bandwidth and things like that, so it's not possible to route the all traffic of whole cloud on one Linux machine server on, or something like this. And this is very tightly uh, connected with the performance because we, oh, sorry, uh, uh, we are now uh, able to get 9.6 gigabits uh, on 10 gigabits line outside of the cloud, inside of the cloud. But it is not about only on bandwidth, but also about packet per second. And the performance of, of Open Contrail is, is amazing. And the VROUT is much better stuff than Open vSwitch. Uh, the next point was interconnection between SDN and Fabric. And there is not so many SDN solutions who can provide you these things very easily. And the requirements was to how can you connect the intranet network into the uh, software-defined network? And with this solution, you are able very easily connect underlay world with your overlay world. And we really need it, for example, for some bare metal servers or, or for uh, external uh, physical firewalls. And the last thing is the physical F5 integration. Uh, all solutions introduce you that they have integration for F5, but they have integration just in the graphical user interface, just for clicking, and uh, we want to automate it. We don't want to use the clicking buttons. So uh, the idea is to uh, use uh, F5 integration through the heat resources and describe the whole infrastructure, including physical F5 by heat. It is now in the beta release of, of, of uh, Open Contrail. Uh, so, uh, what was our findings after POC, when we finished the POC? Uh, we needed live migration, and uh, for live migration, we decided that our production instances must be booted from the volume. And for this purpose, we used existing Hitachi uh, VSP storage on the fiber channel, so all instances in production are booted from the volume, and uh, disks are uh, mapped as the raw devices into instances. The second thing is automatic DNS registration uh, with open contrail. Uh, we don't need to develop some integration that after provisioning it registers something into Microsoft Active Directory and things like that because Contrail natively support uh, automatic uh, creation domain records. Uh, for glance images, we decided to put it on the NFS storage, existing EMC NFS storage. Maybe in the future uh, we would like to move it into Swift because Swift is in our uh, internal roadmap to implement it into AVG. And the last thing was uh, orchestration, uh, w where we find the approach which is suitable for us. So uh, use heat as a creation of uh, virtual resources and so describe the infrastructure by templates of the heat, provision it, and after register it into some configuration management or orchestration management and uh, deploy uh, configuration into application. So uh, when I do the conclusion, so for the Nova and for the KVM hypervisors, we uh, decided for the, for the Ubuntu. Uh, it has several improvements for us, for example, the kernel and, and things like that. And 
uh, it provides much better things than uh, CentOS. Uh, for the Cinder, uh, we use the uh, Hitachi storage driver. Uh, for the Neutron, uh, SDN solution, open contrail. And for the configuration management, uh, we use SaltStack for the uh, provisioning of uh, underlay infrastructure like compute nodes, controllers, databases, and Puppet uh, already exists in AVG before we started for their application deployment stuff. Uh, for the monitoring and billing, we use our TCP cloud solution because we are not just the deployers and integrators, but we also use the, our uh, monitoring system, uh, which is based on Sensu monitoring framework, and uh, we, devel uh, we developed also the, our bill matter uh, application, uh, which we covers in our uh, cloud deployments. Uh, so this picture uh, covers the, our OpenStack architecture. I can speak on each slide for almost more than 30 minutes, so I will try to describe it very briefly. Uh, so on the top, uh, this, uh, this is how it looks, one data center. So in each data center we have on top of that we have uh, two Juniper MX when we created two types of uh, VRF, routing instances, where we terminated our SDN word. The first one is um, uh, INET, which provides public IP addresses, so standard floating IPs, as, as you know from the OpenStack. And the rest of VRFs are different demolatory zones uh, uh, inside of the uh, AVG intranet to able provide direct access uh, to instances inside of the cloud. So we separated uh, we separated uh, MySQL Galera cluster from the OpenStack into separated free uh, virtual machines. Uh, we also uh, we created the OpenStack controller stack where are in high availability all APIs, uh, all OpenStack APIs, RabbitMQ and uh, keep alive with HA proxy, which proxying all these APIs. And we run free virtual machines with high available solution uh, for open control. Uh, rest things, uh, there is a proxy because we are proxying our APIs. We don't put it the uh, APIs on an HTTPS SSL, but we using proxy for that. And uh, we separated Silometer MongoDB for the metering and storing data into our graphite graphical database inside of the billing system. And the blue one is our master node, which deploys all the inf configuration. It is salt master node, which uh, uh, deploys them. Uh, at the bottom is uh, NFS, which is uh, from EMC. It is for, for Glance image repository. And in compute nodes, we have just one network, which is called Cloud Underlay Networks, and we are using the uh, encapsulation MPLS uh, over GRE. Each server has 10 gigabit ports and uh, bonding inside. OK, so what we created and what is more important than just the platform, because OpenStack is just the platform, but you need to also prepare the processes for that. Uh, OpenSec itself is not enough uh, for your company if you don't have any s continuous integration and delivery system inside. So uh, if I start at the bottom, uh, you have a uh, version system. For this, we are using uh, GitLab. And there is all, all, uh, all templates from the heat, uh, all jobs uh, definition for the, uh, for the Jenkins and also formulas and uh, hierarchical database for our configuration management system. So uh, orchestration resources is done by, uh, by OpenStack Heat. So Heat prepares all virtual resources, uh, including IP addresses, disks, uh, security policies, uh, routing policies, so everything we want to uh, deploy through the Heat. And uh, HEAT is, of course, managed uh, by some continuous integration tool, which is, in our case, uh, Jenkins. And uh, so when, when the resources are prepared and deployed, uh, there is action for the configuration management, where for application purposes is used the Puppet and uh, 
uh, Ansible now. And as you can see, the process is that AVG has some development environment, some QA, staging environment, and uh, production environment, and this is the way how, how they uh, produce the uh, application uh, uh, inside of the company. So, and we are going into, the, we are finishing now. So uh, this, is, this is how it looks uh, the AVG dashboard. Uh, it's pretty nice and <laughs> I like that. So uh, it's a standard Horizon dashboard. Uh, we just brand it and prepared for the design and put the menu on the top. And we also edit our internal monitoring and billing. So we are using the Horizon for everything and integrate everything inside, but not hard integrated, but similar like other OpenStack project, uh, projects through the, uh, through the API. So this is much better than you have some external, uh, external dashboard or things like this. So one pane of glass uh, for everything. And now I give a word Pavel to explain you what is the best Thank one. Uh, as I said on the beginning, uh, deployment of the infrastructure takes us a days. Uh, uh, it was uh, on the first step we had to manually deploy, for example, F5 load, uh, F5 uh, load balancer configuration, firewall networks, uh, storages. Uh, then we were able to. Uh, deploy the server's uh, application content to the server, prepare deploy scripts for application, uh, uh, for, for, for the deploying of, of new version of the applications. It took us, uh, took us again uh, in days. And when we had uh, these f uh, two steps done, uh, we could start do the basic test if the infrastructure is really working. Uh, and uh, it takes again in days. Uh, uh, finally, uh, uh, we spent uh, our creation of the, for example, staging environment it takes us 10 days because there were a lot of uh, delays uh, or waiting uh, for each team. Right now, uh, it is, uh, we choose, choose a template, uh, a template what, what you can apply. Uh, st uh, starting out automatic infrastructure deployment and uh, we are just waiting. And uh, when the infrastructure is deployed, it started the uh, application deployment. It takes, it depends uh, on how big is the database, how big is the project. And uh, when all these things are done, uh, autom we automatically start the test. If all tests are uh, green, then the infrastructure is deployed. Uh, <coughs> this, this process takes about half an hour or uh, sim uh, uh, half an hour, and uh, it is big improvement from 10 days to half an hour. It's, it's nice. Therefore, our development is uh, very satisfied because uh, with each uh, 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 every two weeks, uh, they can uh, they can have a new uh, new infrastructure uh, on click prepared for uh, for for the for for the for, for the new uh, the, for the new development. And the, uh, therefore, we fulfill our goals. Yeah. Okay, I, right now I have to thank guys from the TCP Cloud for his great job. I have to thank uh, thanks also uh, my team because he did also the the great uh, great job, and thank you for attending. It's time to to your questions. Yeah, the question is if uh, what's our plan because the deployment is very agile and we are using the 
uh, legacy style fiber channel storage uh, Hitachi VFSP. So what is our plan with the storages? Yeah, uh, uh, probably we, we, we stay, with, stay with this, this solution because uh, right now we are using uh, many type of storages, EMC, Dell, uh, whatever, and everything, uh, these storages are virtualized uh, behind the, uh, the Hitachi. And uh, the, this model gives us uh, the possibility to, uh, to get uh, the, the power of the, of the, of the biggest Hitachi, Hitachi storage that we have. Uh, as Jakub mentioned, uh, for, for the uh, application uh, content or for uh, instead of uh, NFS, uh, we plan to use uh, Swift as an ob object, object, distributed object, object storage, because uh, we need to uh, expand the NFS, let's say, we need to expand NFS over, over all data centers over the world, and with the NFS it's not, not possible. <laughs> Therefore, the Swift is probably the, the solution. Yes, and developers uh, works with Amazon S3, so we need to offer we need to offer them alternative for that. So the plan is to implement the Swift as object storage. Yes. Do you have further plans to improve that application deployment time? Thirty minutes still seems like an eternity. Our developers wouldn't wait thirty minutes. That, I mean, two minutes. <laughs> are, you, are you actively trying to get that down? Uh, yeah, uh, one thing is to create envi uh, the whole environment. It takes some time. Uh, when, you, when you have it and when you are a developer and you produce a new, new version of your code, uh, it is possible to just uh, update, update the application content. Therefore, you, uh, with, uh, with each commit, you don't need to wait for uh, 30 minutes for, for the new infrastructure. Uh, you just com commit it and r run the job to, uh, to apply this, this uh, change. Yeah. It is uh, the, the 30 minutes uh, or this time is uh, uh, in agile development is called uh, to these two weeks uh, uh, iteration or uh, it, it, we create a new environment uh, with every, every, every sprint. Yeah. And during the sprint, the, the, the environment remained the same. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, it is SDN, so there is no VLANs. It is, uh, we are using encapsulation MPLS over GRE. So basically, open contrail use the vRouter mod kernel module in the hypervisors instead of standard open vSwitch. And each network is actually VRF, routing instances, inside of the hypervisor. And uh, between all compute nodes and gateways, you have GRE tunnel and your networks going to, uh, are attacked by MPLS labels inside of the GRE tunnels. So it is overlay world completely. So we have just tra one transport VLAN between compute nodes and inside of that there are these virtual networks. So you didn't explore the claim OBS that neutron being an option, not NSX, but just OBS? Uh, so, sorry, I didn't... Is OBS the neutron? No. Is that an option to explore without being an NSX? Uh, yeah, uh, this is, yes, NSX uses OBS, uh, open vSwitch. Uh, no, no, we don't want combination. We want to have open control in whole infrastructure. Yes? The control plane, the control stack you showed, is it all based on virtual machines or based on physical servers? What is the deployment? Yeah, uh, it's based on, uh, on virtual machines. Uh, the part of virtual machines is on KVM, uh, the standard KVM, and part of uh, is on existing uh, SXE infrastructure, VMware. So, but everything is uh, vir virtual machines. The physical machines are also are only center controllers because we are using fiber channel. So we, uh, you need to be able to create the volumes uh, for the booting. So you have a fiber channel card and this cannot be the virtual, but the rest is completely virtualized. Well, are the, uh, does Contra depend on Juniper hardware devices or is it 
No, uh, the, uh, this is the big advantage because uh, it is a vendor open solution and we have several different implementations when we are using, for example, Cisco routers. You don't need to have Juniper MX boxes for, for the open contrail. You need to have the devices which support IBGP, MPLS, GRE and VRF functions and it's not uh, depends on that but if you want to use the F5 integration uh, I mean load balancing as a service function which we would like to implement it you need to have MX because it is proof and tested with the, uh, the automatic managing with MX routers okay so if is there any more question thank you for your attention thanks a lot <laughs>